All right, so here's what's up. By tomorrow, you need to have those three homeworks turned in. Really, you should try to get it done today um, because I may or may not make a big old reminder tomorrow. Um, maybe. I'm not sure. Um, there was also the worksheet from like way last week that was due. Um, the distributed property and like terms review. So if you have yet to turn that in, that's going to be part of the beginning of quarter three work as well. So that worksheet will be getting together in class most of the week. We have like two problems left. Um, and I think most of us are mastered and we're there. Because everything got so goofy last week, um, sorry again, I have a giant pit on the side of my house now. Uh, we're about halfway through the project. But we probably won't have a mini master this week. We'll probably just have class today and tomorrow. Um, and with all the opportunity you had last week to get practice work done, you might be writing down these assignments and then putting checks next to them already. If you're already done with 522 and 523, which you might be because you had time last week, um, that'd be sweet. If you are in, like you're already in your Chromebook, go ahead and go to CPM and log in. We're going to go to the Chapter 5 work and we're going to want to go to 522. And then, if you're labeling your notes, you want to label it probability simulations. And my board is way off. That is So in our notes, five, two, two, prob, that's an O, probability, yes, what, yes, yeah, go into the ebook, probability simulations. Now we want to remind ourselves of something before we get too far into this. We talked last week about different types of probability. Yeah, so don't don't do anything yet. Once you're there, you're good. Just hang on and wait because you don't know what we're doing yet. Seventeen. Seventeen. Yeah. What are the two types of probability that we talked about last week? One where we actually do it, and another where we just think about it. And I remember those two different types. What if I made it like a piece of candy? So if you can find it in your notes or remember what they were, what are the two types of probability? Eva? No, we talked about those sort of things. That's like the types of ways we can set up the game in that week. Yeah, theoretical and experimental. So on your paper, please, ooh, jumped way down to the bottom. Under probability, split to the two types. So experimental and theoretical. At the end of class, I think that's how we split. You figured that out a couple minutes ago, dude. I told you, see me back. Can, can you get with me? Like, just get out blank, blank paper right and just... Right so, experimental, what you want to write under that to remember it, is we actually do it. Right? We All do right. the experiment. The theoretical, we just think about it. That TH, right? Theoretical. We just think about it. So today, we're doing the experimental. We are going to run some of these simulations and see how accurate or not they are. So you should have this in your notes, guys. I got rid of my graph paper to make it a bit easier. Experimental, we do it. Theoretical, we think. So then, 
Anyone want to read? I was kind of killing time to get there. Brendan, do you want to read our... I'll zoom in for you. Um, probably all the way down to, like, simulations. It's just so easy. If you call for four in the day... Be loud. If you call for... Uh, if you call for four in the day time, what is the probability of being heard in the more head scenario? In the Antarctic, air line and over the Antarctic flight, what, what is the chance of more passengers showing up than the airplane has room for? And 67... Statisticians means a what is well, what does the ishin mean? Uh, specialist. specialist, right? So this is a person who specializes in statistics. That's that's what they are. So continue. So I doubt I really needed to find this for you guys because you like go to the arcades or whatever, get on your computer. You're doing simulations all the time. You do simulations in social studies. It's where we like play something out, but not act like we do it in a computer, right? Or in some sort of situation that is not the real thing. So I don't actually have to have a real deck of cards. I could do the computer simulation. I don't have to actually have a real dice to roll. I, just, I can do a simulation. So many simulations require the use of random numbers. And to be truly random, you have to take out the human element. If you walk up to somebody and you say, pick a number between 1 and 10, it's not truly random. Like, you're going to get one result out of the numbers you give them, but there's probably a reason, like, oh, I like the number 7, or I like odd numbers versus even numbers. Like, it's not truly random unless we use a computer. So, for that, we use what we call a random number generator. So, if you would please navigate to 534, if you're not in the lesson yet, we're just in 522, and then click on the 534 student e-tool. Now here's where you need to pay attention and look at the screen because this confused me when I first played with it. To um, modify the generator, you need to click on this bold, dark edge on the outside and hold it until a little thing pops up that will tell you like, so you don't want to move it, you just want to hold it. So if I'm moving it, it doesn't give me the... Like the turn rate and slow down. Yeah, and actually it might be because I've loaded this a couple times. So you should have a little window pop up, like a little menu, except my mouse keeps trying to move it. So look at the first game that we play. What are the integers that we want to go from and to? 1 to 20. So we need to set our generator to just go 1 to 20. See, this didn't work earlier, then it, aha. So from 1 to 20, we want to generate either one number at a time, or we could generate multiples at a time, but we'll just go one at a time to make life easy. So with your partner, you guys want to generate these numbers. Don't count the first one that's showing right now. Um, how many times do we want to play this? You want to just do it 10 times and track the data real quick? So do this 10 times, but write down the results that you get. So on your paper, before you start, label, hold up, label this is 534. This is problem 534. And, new page. and then we're going to say 1 to 20. So in game 1, if we get a prime, x wins, anything else, y wins. So if you have a partner, you guys can decide who's the prime number, who's not. Really, we can generate the 10 numbers and then go back and look at the results. So the first number that I have generated, I think it was like 3, then it was 9. 
I write down this list of numbers, then I can go back and identify how many were prime. So if I click this, I got an 8, so I would write down an 8. Click it, get a 3, write down a 3. Click it, get a 10, write down a 10. We're going to do that 10 times, write down all your results, then go back and count how many were prime. Remember, prime means it's only divisible by 1 and itself, only evenly divisible. So generate those 10 random numbers, write them down, figure out how many were prime, what was the odds of prime winning. search it or try to divide with it. When you are done with this section, you should have on your paper your list of 10 numbers and then a probability of prime, however many you got. Out of 10. So if it's prime, according to the game, so if we go back to the lesson, this game was that if you get a prime number for your result, player X will win. Game two is an even number, player X wins. And game three, so what we're going to determine then is which game should we choose for the best chances of winning. So that I can give you just a couple minutes to work. Here's what's up. For game one, we did this 10 times. We're going to do the same thing for game two. Write down your list of 10 randomly generated numbers. I will do the same thing for game three. I was debating whether we use the same list or different list, but I think it'll be easier for you. So in game one, you want to circle your prime numbers. Game two, once you go through and generate them all, circle your evens. Use that for your probability. Game three, we're going to circle not divisible by 3. Does that make sense? Stick of a hand if you get confused. We're generating a lot of random numbers here. Now here's the other thing we could do, guys, to make your life easy and use the uh, tools to their maximum. How could I change, and Riley, I'm going to throw this question to you. How could I change my generator to make like a little bit less work? So I, I can do a max of six. What if I do five at a time? I only have to click it like twice, right, for each game. So my first results were 16, 6, 22, and 6. Yeah, natural is also counting numbers. Uh -huh. mm, whole. Natural and whole are normally synonymous. But I think natural also includes a zero. The whole numbers don't technically Wait. include a zero. What is there, though, right? Yeah. What do you mean I had a thing? Like, I don't know. I just yeah. had the whole. You had like a shell. Fairly sure. I didn't bring anything here or take anything away. I know. Alright, 
So to make sure we're all on the same page, bring your attention for just like 20 seconds. Here's my list of 10 numbers that I got for game one. Right? I did it generating five at a time twice, just to work a little bit easier now that we understand how that generator works. So I'm going to go through and search for primes. Is it prime? No, 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 no. Yeah. Does one count as prime? No, no. It's, a, it's kind of like this long argument that people are having. Mr. Smith, what do you think? Should we count one? You're going to say no? 17 prime? Yeah. No, no. 15 is not. 3 and 5. Number 6, 3 and 2. Ooh, 2 is a prime. Even though it's even, 2 is the only even prime number. Because it's only divisible by 1 and itself. Oops, catch. I kind of skipped that on purpose. So here, I get that my probability of prime from the experiment is 2 out of 10. Yours might be different. You don't get a different probability other than 2 out of 10. Yet your experiment came out differently. So do this again for game two, playing out if, um, what was it, is it even or something like that? And then play out game three. Do the 10, ten numbers. Figure that out. Good thing that doesn't matter right now since we're in math class. Being able to make the pop noise with your mouth. Stop, please. Barbara's doing that. Knock it off, please. Game three is going to take your brain being turned on. Oh, yeah. You can. Actually, once you get done with game two, go ahead. Move on to game three. Hey, guys, this is what the next math week is going to look like a little bit. You're going to get individual results for your test, and your answer will be unique to you. Hey, Riley. Or... Whichever one of these logged in, I'm not accounting your account off whatever the color change is going to make for the light on the front. It's actually against the acceptable use policy. If you're actually modifying things in the hardware, or if you're actually modifying how the device works, you're just not allowed to do that. So I try to play game three. I'm looking for not divisible by three. Right? Isn't that the... Are we doing two? Yeah, not divisible. I mean, I think a lot of us already did this. Do you need more time? So two is even. Even is just easy to identify. Yeah. Right? I was just jumping to three because it's the hard one to find. So game two, even number, player X wins. Right? You guys can go through them pretty quickly, even or odd. But game three, a number not divisible by three. So if it's not divisible by three, I will circle it. So, not divisible by 3, not divisible by 3, not divisible, not divisible. Yeah. So, wait. According to this, the probability that it's not divisible by 3. Anyone else get 9 tenths? It is divisible by three. So I'm circling things that are not divisible by three. Right? So game three said if it's not divisible by three, player X wins. We're trying to help player X determine which game to play. So I need justification from your probabilities 
Rabiba, what game would you advise player X to play and why? Would you tell him to play game one, game two, or game three? We want the highest probability of winning. Why is that? What did you get for your probabilities? And what were your first two for game one and game two? Were they less than that? Yeah, so on your paper right now, and it's like, guys, this is what I'm, like, this is probably directly what I'm going to have you do on that sheet. We're going to randomly generate numbers. Then you'll have to justify player X should choose. And we can agree, we can just start writing. So player X should choose. You're writing with me. Now, your results might have been different, but you want to write in your notes which game had the best results. Right? For me, it was game three. So I'm going to say player X should choose game three because probability of nine tenths, that's like a 90% chance he's going to win supposedly. No, 21 divided by 3, but not 10. And 21 is L, right? We, we don't even have a 21 that's going to happen here. Did anyone get a different game as your best probability? Because it can happen. I'm just curious. What should the probability in game 2 be? 50-50. 50-50. Seventeen to not eighteen to not. I circle things that are not divisible by three. We're looking for what wins, and the win happens when you're not divisible by three. Who got something other than five tenths for game two? You did not get five tenths. Okay, who did get five tenths? Do you actually have a probability of a half? What did you guys get? I didn't see hands. What did you guys get for game two? Yeah, any, any? 6 out of 10. So we know that with a set of numbers, a straight set of numbers, those are called um, sequential. Then just one right after the next, we don't skip any. A sequential set of numbers just like Sky said, our probability should be a half. Does that mean it always happens? No. So simulations don't always go the same way as what we anticipate. So everyone comfortable with how the generator works? Now, just to have another thing, like another resource in your back pocket, if, now you don't have to, sorry, not random.com, if you go to random.org, this, essentially does the same thing, but it only generates one number at a time. So if I went here, okay, I got a one, I got a four, I got a six, I got an 11. Like I can generate all day long, but the other really good thing about this website, and you guys can play with this later, especially if you don't have any homework, if you did it all um, last week or whatever, you can go and play these games. So you can go and play a coin flipper game. Now, it asks you what kind of coin you want to use, so I don't know, like, whatever. And then you can flip them. So I'm flipping two coins. Now, apparently that says a bad word. American voting coin. Probably doesn't have a bad word, hopefully. So, George Bush. And I, so there's just all kinds of games here. You can go and do um, a card deck and set, like, what is in the deck. So random.org. Really good resource if you're trying to get randomly generated stuff from a computer. Um, go back to the lesson page. And we need someone else to read. And I think, it, Sky, you have a babysit. Yeah. Yeah, you want to read about Janelle and her babysitting?
Yeah. All right, so here's what's up. How many options are there? Three. Three. How many times are we going? Five. How can we set up the random number generator to help us solve this problem? So go to the E tool. But now we need to modify this to help us determine the, the likelihood that we get all three different toys in our five trips. So I want you and your partner to talk about this. How do you think we're gonna modify this to work for this situation? And there's some instructions on the left side, but I want, I want you to give this a shot. Mr. Smith, I don't think this thing likes, uh, I think it's the fact that I have a smart board connected also, I don't know, it's not like, I don't know. So, now that I finally got this to work, is there anything that I could do here to make things just way easier, that I could see it, just boom, I either got them all or I didn't? Isaac, what do you think? Put the integers to five. So now, so these are the different toys, right? So I got toy three on my first trip on my last trip. I got toy one. Ooh, it's like race car, right? It's an anagram. Same forwards and backwards. Yeah? Is it anagram that's the same forwards and backwards? I forget what it is. But yeah, this is the same forwards and backwards. But did she get all the toys? Yeah. Did we get all the toys on this one? No. Did we get all the toys here? No. Did we get all the toys here? Did we get all the toys here? No. So, if you were paying attention, and this is all random. How many times did I just click through cycle that? Five. How many times did I get all the toys? Three. Well, I, I don't know. So, here, give me your attention up here. Because I'm going to have you guys fly on your own on the next one, probably. If we want to actually talk about the probability of getting all five toys, I can't just do this once and say yes or no. Like, because that's just one simulation. So, the reason we use simulations is I don't want to actually go to McBurger Town or whatever it's called and keep buying these Happy Meals. I want to randomly figure out what's my chance. So if I run through my simulation like 10 times, what I'm keeping track of is yes or no for each time. So if I start this, somebody keep a list of this, of Y or N. So if we start this time one, sorry, don't move. There we go. Did we get them all? Yeah. Yes. So put down a, a Y. Time number two, like uh, trial number two or simulation number two. Did we get them all? No. Simulation number three. No. Simulation four. No. Simulation five. No. This we're having a bad week. Simulation six. Yes. Simulation seven. No. Simulation eight. Simulation 9 and 10. So now, according to our 10 simulations, what's our probability we get all the toys? 4 out of 10, according to that simulation set. Now, I could do more and make it like some amount out of 20 or some amount out of 30. Like I can keep doing more trials, but do we understand the idea behind these simulations? Just like fake doing. Instead of going to McBurger Town 50 times, which is what that would have taken, 50 Happy Meals. It's like, or not Happy, not Happy Meals. Those are probably, that's probably a trademark and we're not allowed to say that. That's why they also call it McBurgers and they can't call it McDonald's. They'll get in trouble. McDonald's. 
Yeah, but I can say whatever I want. I'm just measly classroom teacher. Like, so, so, we did this more than, well, sorry, well, we ended up with more than 10 probably, or more than 20, because I did it so many times. Do I understand, like, what that would do for us, though? Like, running the simulations? All right, so different situation. I'm going to give you guys a couple minutes. Anyone new want to read? Ava, go ahead and read about Janelle's aunt. So, I want you guys to, again, using our same random me tool, we've got some instructions over here, and we've got the same situation, the same setup that we just read. How do I check how this is set up to see if it's going to do what I want? And down here, a couple questions to prompt you. So, I'm going to give you guys a couple minutes to work through this. Now you want to close your other random generator window just to not confuse you. So if you have any other eTool windows open, close them. And you want to be looking only at this one. Okay, play with this for a minute. What do you think? It's easier for you because you're not using a mouse. Computer officially hates me. So, now that I finally got this to pop up, you had a good like, couple minutes there on your own. If we're just trying to talk boy versus girl and a family of three kids, how can I change my generator to help me figure this out? Freaking kid. So you mean make this three? Okay, so there's three kids. So actually down here, they tell us, use a one to represent a girl and a zero to represent a boy. So we're going to make it from zero to one. So make sure that your generator should be set to generate three results, right? Three kids from zero to one. Now what we want to check from our simulations is how many results get two or more girls. So we're looking for ones, and we want two or more. Does this one get it? Yeah, so this would be a yes. So you want to go through and do this at least 10 times. I mean, you've broken it somehow. So my first one was a yes. And you should be doing this on your computer so you get other results. My next one, I got all boys. So that's a no. Right, I don't have at least two girls. So I started the inventory. Um, 
um, think the easiest way to do it would be by weight. So like the low numbers are the lightest. So I've, I've been thinking for all the putters. Actually, part of this, I think you can push if a kid gets done with their discovery day stuff while they're here on Thursday. I could have them help me inventory these. Um, but like all the here, these are like the heaviest and actually bigger putters. They're actually like larger. Um, so it depends on what kids are looking for, whether they want to go lighter. So that's putter 21. That was where I stopped inventorying. Because then Brandon was like, I, I didn't know if you want one of these or whatever else. And they feel that plastic. It's like a grippier, that's why it's called the jawbreaker plastic. However, they make it, it comes out looking like a jawbreaker, but it's like, I like the grippiness of it. Um, and then drivers, I was trying to pull some out that are like too powerful for the kids. Like the disc ball, it'll go up and jackknife straight down just with how the disc is made. So I'm trying to negotiate that and swap out some discs. And like, so this is like a ski 10 as opposed to like there was a ski 13 in here. And I'm like, you can't, kids can't be a ski 13. What'd you get? Out of your 10 trials, three out of 10 had two girls or more. Oh, I Not exactly two yeah. girls, two or more, right? Nathan, what'd you get? Six ten. So in Nathan's trial, now Nathan, don't you have two sisters? So in Nathan's trial and in his real life, two girls, one boy. That's what happened. But in his trial, he got six tenths. Who else? What trial would you get, Riley? Three out of ten. Three out of ten that had two or more girls. Interesting. That's kind of a wide discrepancy. Casey. Five out of ten, so straight there in the middle, just a half chance of having that family with two girls. Yeah? Seven out of ten. Yeah. And guys, what this comes down to, it's seriously like a 50-50 chance for boys versus girls when like genetics happen, when, when you know conception happens. And uh, there's really nothing we can do to push that probability one way or the next, which is why some of you got three out of ten. You got a 30% chance. Some of you got 50% chance right there in the middle. Some of you got a really high probability. It's random. So our results are going to kind of ebb and flow and kind of go back and forth depending on the, the random trials. I have a question. Yeah. Like, genetically, I don't know where I'm going. I think there's a tiny advantage to female. If we just trace based off data, I think it, it comes up to like the birth rate recently has been like 51% female and 49% male. Well, like, Whoa. Is it like So somewhere else, this, this is actually a great conversation for us to wrap on today. There is a mathematical law that if you just want to make a tiny little note of it, it's called the law of large numbers. And what that means is exactly what Skye's asking about. So my family has a lot of boys. My relatives have a lot of boys. Like how is the birth rate even if all these people that I know have lots of boys? What do you think? Any ideas? Yeah, there's seven billion people in the world somewhere else. Somebody's family has a lot of girls. So the law of large numbers. Hey, th this is really where we need to wrap because we need to understand why we're getting such different results. Give me your eyeball. The law of large numbers actually states if we do something only a few times, our results are like meh. They're close. They're okay. Hey, but if we do something a lot of times, excuse me, you sit here and you run this simulation a thousand times. Your results, the more times you run the simulation, get more accurate. So that's what the law of large numbers says. Is if in a few trials, our results seem really weird, you need to do it a lot more times. Okay? If you log off, you may leave the Chromebooks out today. We still have a couple minutes left for the end of class. Um, I will take this as a moment to um, selfishly advertise all of our disc golf stuff came in. Um, we are inventorying it and working toward being able to have you guys play with it. And I know like Labiva and some people um, are already into it. This isn't even all of them, but guys, we, we, we got discs now. So come springtime, and actually here in the winter, we'll, we'll do some stuff uh, in the gym, and I think Mr. Smith is going to do another unit maybe through wellness. But come springtime, I'm ready to start this club.
So, and then math counts kind of dwindles come spring because our competition's already happening. So, get ready to disc golf. Let's do this. I want a disc golf. I want a disc golf too. Oh yeah. And actually, I think on this next batch of discs I buy, I'm gonna be able to sell them to you guys like at cost essentially. So whatever we pay, um, if you guys want to buy your own, if you like start to like a disc, you can just say, okay, this is mine, and bring me like five bucks or whatever I need. You, I don't want to get the bag out. We just get something out of it. It's easier to just not.